You're listening to Copy Chief Radio. Get all the episodes and join the community at copychief.com. What's up, everybody? It's Kev. Welcome. So glad you're here. Today, we're going to talk about how freelance copywriters can do profit partnerships with their clients, because really, isn't that why we're doing this? How many times if you're actively working with a lot of clients, I know I had this moment in my career where it's like, wow, they're celebrating some really big numbers. I wonder if I could ever have some of that money. I got paid. I I feel good about what I got paid, but uh, now it's gone and I have to go earn it again. And so it's just a very natural evolution for any copywriter. And I know from my experience in coaching that it's a point of confusion for people. It can be uncomfortable to feel like you're pitching a client. You have a good relationship on a way for you to make more money, but done correctly. It's a real big win for both parties. And so my buddy, Chris Mason is with me today. You may know Chris. You probably know Chris as Brian Kurtz's, I think it's safe to say kind of right-hand man. He's been helping Brian build and grow Titans mastermind and all of Brian's stuff for years. He's well-respected, well-regarded, and it's great to have you on, Chris. Thank you, man. So great to be here. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. And so the reason we're on the side of enjoying each other's company is I'm actually late because you just launched this program and I saw the sales letter. So I hate to tell people that they can't join immediately, but this is so perfect. This is what you specialize in and you've done these deals and you've taught other people to do these deals. Let's just give an overview of why you felt compelled to to do the training. Was it the same for you where a lot of people come into you going, how do you do such a thing? I started doing the the training, it was really about a year ago now where it kind of dawned on me that, that I had actually done several of these deals and I counted them up. I'd I'd done nine of them. And it just hit me because Brian and I have a group, we run uh, Titans Accelerator. And because, you know, we've been like, I've been co-leading that group for the last five years, it put me in more of a position that wasn't so behind the scenes. And I was actually developing some training and doing some teaching. And so I just had that hat on for the group. And so then I was like, well, what else can I do that's going to help people in the group? And I started thinking about, you know, these profit sharing deals that, that I had done. And and so the the challenge, I, I, I took, you know, two months last summer and just started trying to document it. Like if mm-hmm. I was going to teach this process, what would it look like? And, yeah. you know, I, I really wanted to to just really base it on my experience because I know there are several ways to kind of go about it, but, but just breaking down like what I had done, what to work for me and thought, well, if I, if I just share this with people in the group and get some feedback, you know, maybe I had a hunch that like, well, this would be something that, that I think more, I mean, copywriters for sure, but I, you know, I kind of call them behind the scenes marketers kind of come in all stripes and shapes. And I, I think there, there are ways like if you, if you can point to new revenue that that you were the one that created that, like there's a really simple way just to have that conversation of how you can be yeah. compensated. So that, that was sort of the the driving force behind it of like, I've got this hunch that I think people would, would like to at least be in, introduced to the concept and they can decide if it's for them or not. Yeah, hundred percent. It's one of the most convoluted things for people. Like it makes perfect sense on paper. And then when presented with it, and oftentimes it'll be even the client or the business owner who who proposes it because mm-hmm. they see that this person's resourceful and obviously they're able to, especially with copywriters, able to get con- conversions, move the needle. What do you see as the actual sticking points in deals like this? Is it easy enough or is it kind of complicated? I found it to be easier than, than you would expect. And I think one of the reasons uh, for me is that when I, every time I've, approach somebody about about doing these kind of deals like it, it's always around a specific offer so i'm not saying that i want to take a percentage of everything that you make sure. it's usually because yes. i've got an idea i'm like and and what i what i personally like to do is like i like coming up with new products and i, I like looking in somebody's business and understanding who they're selling to and you know, usually I've come in as just a, a copywriter and I'm I'm selling their products and I'm getting to know the market. And then I'm like, oh, well, I think, you know, you don't have 
this product and I, I think we could sell that. So my proposal usually is like, hey, I'll, I'll build this thing for you. I won't charge you for it. I'll take on the risk because I think it can work. And then we'll split the the profit of that 50-50. And I, I do use the word profit because if, if there are ever any cost of goods or expenses that need to come off the top, yeah. then I always feel like I'm, that's me showing up more of like, I understand your world as a business right. owner that you yeah. have things, you know, other considerations and expenses that I don't have to think about. So it's not just top right. line revenue. So in, in that sense of, of, if I just make an offer specific, then it's not like I'm trying yeah. to come in and be a part of things that I didn't help create. hundred percent. That That's the ultimate. I think I had an incredible experience like that with Rachel Mazza, hmm. where I knew there was a need for a, program for beginner copywriters. I had RFL, which would, you had to have some time in the game and I needed to create it, but it was like, man, typical business owner, when am I going to stop and be able to create a whole new thing? Yep. And I uh, told Rachel and she's like, well, let's just got on a call and talk it out. And we did, we talked for like 90 minutes and I, I thought, okay, this will probably be like the first of four or five calls. At the end of the call, she goes, she said these magic words, Chris, I'll never forget. Okay, leave it with me. Leave it with me. It's the greatest phrase you can ever hear as a, as a business owner and a creative. She said, I'll, I'll kind of organize it and we'll come back. And, and when she came back, it was done. Like the whole course was outlined based on what we talked about. And then she went and built it. And so we, that's exactly what we did. I'm like, I'll just give you a percentage of all the sales. She went on to become my my integrator and we worked very closely for, for three years building copy chief. But looking back, that was when she was the happiest yeah. when we did that because she got to build something. And so it's like serves both parties. It was the stuff she loves to do. And it made it even possible, let alone easy for me. And everybody just enjoys in the spoils together. Yeah. I'm glad you said integrator. Cause I, that, I know that comes from uh, rocket fuel. Yeah. It jogged in my memory. Like I, I remember reading that book and really identifying with the role of the integrator. And I think I went through the, the, the tests that they have and I didn't come out like a true integrator, but I definitely have kind of visionary integrator qualities, but, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I did just putting my nose down and just jamming on an idea and building going into, into my, my cave here at home. And, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun, but, but, you know, like I think the very first deal that I ever did was I was on retainer with a client and it was in the survival niche and we were trying to get sales up of a solar generator. And I was just out of corporate America and I didn't want to have bosses. So I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to just do consulting. Cause it just feels like I do the traditional freelancer, I feel like I'm just going to replace my old boss with a bunch of new bosses. And so I was just like, I had this allergy to that. And um, <laughs> so I went to the client, I was like, hey, you know, your your average monthly sales are X, Y, Z for this solar generator. If I can get the average monthly sales above what they are, would you let me share in that profit of of just the surplus that I that I create? And he said, yes. And and then it was like, oh, that, that wasn't so hard. Right. And, then, and then it was all about, you know, tracking and holding people accountable. And that's. Yes. You know, the, the, those are kind of the pain points, I think. Maybe we'll yeah, get into sure. some of those. But yeah, I mean, found money should be a good idea. You know, it's like, for instance, like uh, email is great for this, because if someone has a poor automation, they don't have card abandonment or if their welcome sequence or onboarding sucks, you know, and it's just like wow, you are losing money here because it's not about cramming more offers into stuff. It's just about making things right. It's all very measurable. Look, I get it. I know there's so many communities. I'm doing air quotes, communities for entrepreneurs out there, all filled with their own version of overnight experts chirping at you from behind the screen. You got your Facebook groups, your your clubhouse rooms, just experts galore. Uh, how often do you feel like you're being pinballed around from thing to thing and pick it up a little bit, a little piece there? How much of that is actually making it into your, your brain and your fingers and your business and affecting your money? 
How many of these people are actually out there in the field getting their hands dirty and testing to find out what actually works and what flops? Well, in the copy chief community, a real community, you get shoulder to shoulder with the most active, successful marketers working in the trenches today, all while learning from industry legends who rarely teach anywhere else, if ever. Copy Chief is an amazing community, super newbie friendly. Also, you'll find, you know, elite level uh, marketers and copywriters in there. They're all working to become the best at their craft, get paid top dollar for their skills, stay ahead of the competition by keeping their finger on the pulse of what's working now. That's the X factor when you're backed up by a community and you can get any question you have answered by people who actually do this stuff and can tell you from real world experience what to do for your project, for your offer, for your funnel, for your clients, man, you're unstoppable when you've got that kind of confidence. Go check us out at copychief.com forward slash join. If you've never been a member, you're going to see what you've been missing and you're going to say, where has this been all my life? And if you've been a, a member in the past, I would invite you to come and check out all the new stuff we've completely updated all the tech. So we're on brand new platforms. Everything is slick and smooth and easy to access. And it's just, it's never been better. Copychief.com forward slash join. I'll look for you inside. I think we should probably talk as much about what not to do, because I think people, yeah. I've seen a lot of people get excited about this idea and then they pitch it to the wrong person about the wrong way. What are some of your rules for what makes a good potential profit partner for a service provider? I've had bad experiences for sure and have lost, have lost money doing, mm -hmm. doing these deals. So, and I think in some, like in the, the training that you mentioned, like I even in one of the slides, like I, I say, if you, like, if you go down this, this path, you should expect at some point, like you're going to have a bad deal. You're probably going to lose, lose money it's sort of an acceptance or an acknowledgement of like this, this may not be for you. It's not necessarily for everybody. And it also doesn't mean that like you have to make all of your money doing these kind of deals. Right, so I think right. you can, you can have the retainer clients and, um, and still do some, some profit sharing. But I mean, like the big thing for me on as far as like red flags, like I'm always looking for the person who I, I like to ask about past failures and promotions that didn't go well. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I'm looking for specifically is I wanted to see, are they, are they blaming their team? Are they blaming, you know, somebody else, e even, even if they didn't necessarily have a hand in the promotion or something that didn't go well, I always feel like as the business owner, because I, I would, I would do, and I do do this when, when mistakes happen is like taking ownership yeah. of the failure and, and finding out your piece your, that you own in that. And so- right. I like to ask about failures and I like to hear how they tell me uh, about what went wrong. And then I'm really just looking for like, what could they have done better? And that's a big red flag for me if I don't hear any ownership. The other thing is how somebody talks about their customers, because one of the things I've learned working with Brian for so long is, you know, the customer service is a, is a marketing function. Right, right. And so I've just had that sort of drilled into my, in my head of like, um, the, these are real people. They're, they're they're giving you their their money in exchange for something. Trust, yeah, they're, yeah, their trust. And so, I, what I don't like to hear is like, let's blast them with these. Oh yeah, <laughs> series. When when the the customer feels like a a number, you know, right. and I don't try not to be super judgy, although I, I probably am. But I sometimes it's just like that's probably not going to be a, a fit. Like we right. we don't have the the same. Value respect or value for, yeah. for the, the customer. Yeah. So th those are two big ones for me, just in terms yeah. of like how you think about your business and your role in it. hundred percent. There's got to be alignment. Yeah. Integrity alignment. And, you know, usually works best or do you find it works best when you've been working with the clients? I yeah. mean, the, the ultimate opportunity, right? You're on retainer. And again, just going back to copywriters, because that's yeah. most of the audience here. I always say it's the best thing you can be because there's a level of trust there and they know a, a good client knows it's a relationship and they're going to let you in to see everything and you're going to be working with the team. So you're going to learn very quickly what's going on in this company, what the culture is like. For and 
you also be able to see these gaps and come in and, and have fun money. So the recap so far is propose it to somebody you have a relationship when possible. This is not a thing you're going to go out cold prospecting with, right? I mean, this yeah. is a relationship scenario. And two, be willing to take on the full project. That's what's mm -hmm. going to make it a no-brainer for them. And like I said, leave it with me is the greatest word you could ever hear as a, as a visionary company runner, <laughs> CEO sure. guy. Beyond that, then what are some of the pitfalls? Let's talk about the actual deal itself, because like you said, there has to be transparency. And that goes back to the relationship and having trust, right? Mm -hmm. But how, how would you typically structure it to where everybody feels comfortable and there's transparency? Well, yeah, the, I mean, the other thing you're, you, you want to see as much of the sales data as you can. Yeah. And so that, that will be another red flag if, if they're not going to share, share that information. Yeah. Not a screenshot you. either. Like you, we're logging in together in real time. I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And any kind of resistance to that, like it, yeah. it just may mean that, that you don't have that level of, of uh, trust yet. You know, the other thing that I'm looking for to uh, in the, I, I call it uh mutually assured destruction. So like I, as a way of protection, like I, you want to believe that you're not going to get taken advantage of. I had a, a really bad experience where I had a very profitable deal, but I had partnered with somebody who I didn't really take the time to, to vet him. I, I just saw the opportunity and, mm -hmm. you know, we made some money together, but then kind of true colors come to light. So that was a painful, messy experience. And one of the things I learned from that is I was so glad that I had some control over the funnel. So for example, you know, if you're doing a, a, a deal with somebody, like I'm always thinking, could we use a plugin that, that I own so that if I've got to shut off a piece of the sales flow, right. I can, or, or, you know, a web host, or we're going to use my ClickFunnels account or something like that, or even my Amazon S3 account. I mean, just, I'm just always looking for like, I don't want to have to hit the, hit the red button. But, you know, when I when I had to hit it that one time, I was glad I had it. For sure. That's a really smart one. And again, so a little little bit of tech savvy and, and, and yeah. sort of that's your your cost of, of resource on this. Right. It's not, hey, I'm not just going to sell you new IP I create for you or with you. And again, if there's trust there, just better for them because it's almost like, hey, let's create this together. We're using your audience. It's an add on to the thing you've already built. But. It's kind of going to be, um, I'll pay you for it when the money comes in. That, that's even better. And you learn a lot in just trying to have that conversation or negotiation with people. By the way, Chris, I'm, I'm assuming they can get on a wait list now for when you do this again at chrismason.net. Yep. Is that yep, the best that's thing? The place. Yeah. yeah, that's the place. And, awesome. and on that homepage, I, I've got a, a, a few, what I think are probably opportunities that if you're inside somebody's business that are probably staring you right in the face that you could go in. I mean, kind of similar to what you were talking about with the band and cart, you know, just looking at the, at somebody's funnel of money they're leaving on the table. You know, if you've got somebody that doesn't have any kind of one click upsells or order bumps, a band and cart is another one. Like th those are, those are all opportunities when I see those, uh, because and this is what I did with Brian when I first got started doing these kind of deals with Brian is he didn't have upsells. And so I said, I'll create the upsells. Like, this is what I think the upsell should be. I'll be responsible for increasing that AOV. And we're just going to split just that upsell revenue. One way to go was like, I could have said, well, that's part of my, I'm going to charge you for that. Or I'm not going to yeah. charge you. And we're going to find this money together and, and share it. And now I'm incentivized to, to grow it and make it bigger. 100%. It's just, yeah. a, again, a no brainer for, for the right situation. And like anything else, you pitch it and it's either a yes or a no. And yeah. it, it may be three calls into the conversation where you find a sticking point and decide not to do it. I think people, some freelancers get nervous that, oh, well, then I'll end up losing the whole gig because things will get weird and, and all that. That may or may not happen, but then it's a question of, well, how do you actually want to exist in your business? Do you want to shy away from opportunities because you might lose what you have? That's not a very good growth mindset, right? And so yeah. it's just um, trying things. And when you know what they look like and what to do and how to speak about it, I think you'll be a lot more comfortable proposing it. And of course, seeing those opportunities, a lot of cool stuff on your website. I got to ask you, cause I was just looking through your bio here and we'll 
we'll wrap with this. I always like to get a little insight to something cool and unique people do. You yeah. said you do a different hero workout every month in honor yeah. of a fallen veteran. Tell me about that. So I, I mean, I got into sort of fitness and training a, a few years ago when I looked in the mirror and I was like, who replaced all my clothing with these smaller sizes? <laughs> and, um, and, and so I was like, well, I got to get in shape. And I, I just sort of fell in love with the process of yeah. getting stronger every week and month. And so I, I started competing in uh, these different races and sprint triathlons and those took up too much time. But then I, I don't do CrossFit, but I have nothing against it. But they, CrossFit has this cool thing called hero workouts where it's a it's a CrossFit routine or whatever they call them. And they're named after a fallen veteran and there's a website you can find them. And so I like having when I was doing those races a lot, like I loved having something to to train for and aim at and like you got a deadline. Right. Yeah. So then I just started creating that for myself. Uh, the big one, of course, is, is called the Murph on Memorial Day. And, and that's sort of what started it for me and my my father-in-law. He passed away a couple of years ago. He's a retired colonel in the mm -hmm. Army. And so when I did my first Murph, it was right after he had passed away. And I did it in honor of him. And it just felt good. And so I was like, I, I want to keep keep doing these. So, yeah, that's sort of where that Very came cool. From. Yeah. And so is it a different workout every month or it's in honor of a different person every month or both? Yeah, it's both. I go to the website, I forget what it is, but you can Google hero workouts and I'll pick one and usually like on a Saturday and that'll just be my workout for that day. And I know I've got it coming. Like it just, my regular training prepares me for it. So, so, so yeah, that's, that's sort is of it the, like an all day intense workout kind of thing or. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, just, no. I mean, just you a know, way to recognize and and keep you in touch with gratitude and yeah. I'm sure extra inspiration is somebody made the ultimate sacrifice and it was probably quite a badass when when they were alive. Right? Yeah. I mean, the max that I've had is like it'll take like an hour to do, which is you kind of like a normal workout, and and there are no no weights or anything involved. Usually, there uh, it's you know running or pull ups, and it's a combination. So like a circuit, so you'll like run a mile come do some pull-ups, do some burpees, do some push-ups, run another mile. So you're just kind of on this, uh, this circuit. And, um, yeah. and, and so I, I, you know, it's just one of those things is like, a, for me, just a good connection. And also like, it gives me a, a sense of purpose of like, why, what I'm training for, I, I right, guess, you know, right. just to connect to something kind of bigger. I love that. That's really yeah. good. It's just a great way to stay connected. And you yeah. know what? This is how I'm going to show you my insider Nashville knowledge now. Right. Yeah. Centennial Park would be awesome for that. Totally would. Centennial Park would <laughs> be the awesome only right park there. I've been to in Nashville, but it did have like it has pull up bars and it mm -hmm. you can run around the they got the river there and all that. It seems. Yep. Like, yep. And they've got a uh, a real life replica of the, the Parthenon. That's right. Incredible. Yeah. My yeah. son lives like two blocks from it. That's where he lives over there. Now. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right by there. Yeah. Yeah. Great party. It's super cool. Awesome. Chris, this was really fun, man. Thanks for sharing. I, I Halfway through the interview, I'm like, I'm probably asking things that is in this paid program. <laughs> so thanks yeah. for sharing generously. You always do. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I'm I'm happy if any anybody wants to reach out and ask questions, like I'm happy to, I'm easy to reach and happy to chat. You're a good man. All right. Chris Mason, everybody. ChrisMason.net. Get on his list. As you see, knowledgeable guy. Very generous, and uh, it'll be good to you. We'll talk soon. See you on the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, don't forget your goodies. Head over to copychief.com slash copychiefradio to get some great free stuff to help you put the things you hear on the show into action for your business. Copychief.com forward slash CCR. <laughs>